All right. Thank you all for sticking around. Watch the video. But they were covering those protests. It is one day to Ukraine's crucial national elections. That's the problem. Have a little fun. Now that's good TV. Got a good, good look at some of the really iconic and global brands associated with, uh, with the company of our guest here, Gerhard Zeiler, uh, who is president of, of Turner Broadcasting. He's got a great view on the global market, um, so I think we'll kind of start by looking at the global market and then try to, to bring some of those lessons home here. Um, we'll, we're going to take a lot of questions. You guys have your, your iPads. You can send me questions. I can pick them out. We also have a microphone. We can, we can do that. Um, so, you know, I think that the one way to start is you've thought of the uh, sort of global industry in terms of, of stakeholders. Run through, you know, you've talked about consumers, distributors, and content creators. Just kind of run through what you see as a state of play for those, those stages as this industry is really, you know, changing and evolving so quickly. First of all, um, there are a lot of changes happening in the TV industry, but still, I 100% believe that it is the golden age of television. Uh, if you want the second golden age of television, but it is, TV is here to stay. Why do I say that? First of all, if we run through, and we run through all the broadcasters worldwide, there has been no time when the broadcasters offer more channels, are more profitable, offering more um, product for the people than today. Look about, second, the content creators. Uh, more shelf space as um, ever. Uh, if someone has really the smile on their face when you're thinking about TV, it's the content creators, it's the producers. Um, third, distributors. Uh, I know that um, uh, there's a lot of talk about court cutters and court nevers. And to a certain degree, this is something which is really happening. But on a global scale, pay TV is still growing. So still not a bad time for them. And last but not least, the consumer. He is, in my opinion, the king of the kings because there has been no time um, uh, in the history of TV where the consumer had so much choice uh, and so much power that he can watch what he wants also when he wants and on what device he wants. So that's, for me, the reason why I believe Today, we see a golden age of television. Mm -hmm. As you see those consumers, in a sense, they've got more choice than ever. So what sort of challenges does that, that leave you guys who are operating often in a linear TV environment? Um, first of all, not only about the linear. It's about now that, let's go back 20, 30 years ago. If you had one channel who he was really big, look at the BBC, look at ITV, that was one channel enough to be more or less dominating the TV landscape. Uh, even if you have the number one channel by far in a country or in a market, that's not enough. You can't survive. You have to offer more product. You have to offer four, five, ten channels 
uh, at, with more or less the same cost as the one channel 10 or 20 years ago. That's uh, why you have to be more sophisticated. You have to really position your channels, your brands uh, much better. You have to think not only about great programs, you also have to think what fits to which channel. Um, and that has, uh, you have to be, with other words, you have to be much more efficient. That's for all the broadcasting groups. Mm -hmm. And how does the local, the interplay between a sort of global business and a local market? Um, we, ha we have a saying in our company, and I say that as a representative of one of the really big and great um, uh, international media companies. We have a saying in our country where we say, we are Americans in the US, we are Brits in the UK, we are Germans in Germany, and we have to be um, uh, Emiratis in the, the Emirates, because TV is local. Yes, there are global brands, and there uh, is more than ever, uh, if you have the right global product, people more or less all over the world want to watch that. But on the other hand, if you don't offer local content, which really focus on the cultural sensitivity and the cultural identity of the people, whether it's for kids or whether it's for adults, you will never win uh, the war um, uh, for the consumer. You will never win the war for the eyeballs of the mm -hmm. markets. You need both. Right. If one thinks about sort of the big global challenges of, of the industry, I, it seems like there are a couple that, that you've focused on or, or talked about. W one is how do you get young people to watch television? And that, that's a, a question in some sense that's, that's key to this region because there are so many young people uh, in the region. First of all, young people never watched as much TV than older ones. I mean, when I was young, uh, my main focus was not on watching TV. That hasn't changed. But the second is that young people are watching TV. They are only watching TV most of the time, or at least sometimes in a different way uh, the older generation is watching it. They are not watching it linear. They're watching it on their iPad. They're watching it on their smartphone. They're watching it on their laptop. And that is not measured, at least not yet. But young people, I know that for my daughter, young people are watching TV in a different way. And we have to um, focus on that. We have to measure that. We have to get the advertising industry focusing on that. And we have to also know and see what they are watching on these new um, um, devices. Is that going to be new areas, new ways to distribute, obviously? Or not necessarily? Oh, if, if you are a broadcaster today, you need to dis distribute it um, everywhere where the young consumers want to watch it. So, of course, OTT is something we have to look out for. Um, so far, OTT in most of the markets, it's an asphalt play. In some countries, it will be an, an advertising play. In, uh, in a lot of markets currently, it's more about the library, the long tail. In my opinion, it will be much more current in the future. So that's what we as broadcasters have to think of. We need to um, go to the consumer wherever he wants to watch it and however they want to watch it. Second big challenge, if so in some ways the first one was a bit about subscriptions, advertising growth. Where does that stand in, in sort of globally? What are we looking at in, in terms um, uh, of the first chunk of all, your First getting? of all, globally advertising is still growing healthily. Uh, what we see for the first time, or what we saw in the first time um, this year in the US that the upfront market was going down. Um, is that comfortable? No. But is that a reason to panic? Not at all. I think advertising for TV is here to stay. Why? Because the advertising industry needs TV as a mass market. There is no other media where you get the scale you get with TV first of all. And um, second, we know exactly how TV is working and the impact of the TV advertising to an industry. But on the other hand, for each of the market players, you can't rely only on advertising. I strongly believe that as a market player, as a broadcaster, you need two, two, new, uh, you need two revenue streams, not only one. Don't rely only on advertising. Don't rely only on subscription revenues. You need both. And maybe, especially when you're in the kids sector, you also have to monetize your brands, licensing and merchandising. Mm -hmm. And the last big challenge, uh, linear 
traditional linear television versus on demand and this transformation? Do you see this tr transformation already underway in the big markets like the, the um, U.S. in a meaningful um, way? Oh, yes, it started. It already started. You can see it in a significant way. I think there is, um, uh, in terms of uh, what Nielsen can measure, I think you have now roughly 8 to 10 percent of the viewing time is on demand. This will grow. Whether it will be 20 percent, 30 percent, 40 percent, I don't know. But I still believe that the majority of the viewing time, also in the future, will be on linear. Why? Because TV is also a social thing. The majority of TV viewing is not done alone. Let's not forget that. It's done uh, within your family, especially in the evening. And there is a reason why people in the evening, after having worked hard, coming home, and simply want to watch something. Yeah? And a few of the TV showers like sports, um, you never want to watch sports on demand. Mm -hmm. So there will be both. And especially in the younger generation, you see much more uh, focus also on on demand yet. Um, binge viewing is something which um, becomes fable for younger people. All that we have to focus on. But there will not be the end of linear TV. That's mm -hmm. what I believe. Because it's a social... Um, let's say, a, a, a social thing to watch TV with your, with your family. Mm -hmm. So it, kind of pulling all that together in the industrial market, and this is, in, in a sense, this is a question from the audience. Where do you see television in 10 years? What are the, if you look out, can you look out that far even 10 years at this stage? Um, it's, it's quite interesting. <laughs> you, of course, you can and you cannot. <laughs> yeah? So I, I will try to do that. First of all, when you look at the content of TV, I don't think there will be a lot of change. The change will be that there will be much more thematic channels, much more even smaller channels, uh, where everyone, like in every other industry, if you go and want to shop for trousers, you have hundreds of shops. If you go and to want to watch TV, you have hundreds of opportunities. You have the big brands, you have the main channels where you go, if, because you, you know the brand, you're familiar with the brand, you like the brand, you like what they offer, and then you have your thematic channels. Um, this fragmentation will go on, and although a lot of people believe it's already too much fragmented, I don't believe this will stop at the current stage. It will be more fragmented. But in terms of what people want to watch, my bet is there will not be a huge difference, except that the technology how you produce uh, will be even more sophisticated, more quality oriented. But already today, I believe, we haven't seen an area of TV where you have so many programs on air and so many qualitative um, uh, programs of a high standard. How much of it do you think will be mobile at that stage? Oh, definitely. People will watch mobile. People will watch, uh, I mean, very interesting. One of the countries, if not the country with the highest penetration of fast broadband is Korea. So we're all looking at um, uh, Korea, South of Korea, what's happening there. And even there, the mobile revolution has not started yet. So people are watching a lot of on-demand, but still not so much on mobile. This will come, and this will come because the mobile phone, the, the tablet, the smartphone will be is already now much more than a telephone, as you know. It's a TV set, it's a computer, um, it's a, um, a contact, um, it's a dating system, it's everything uh, for the young people. Mm -hmm. Is there, are there questions at this stage? We're kind of getting toward the end of the broad international over, overview. We'll talk more about the local market, but think of your questions. Um, it is, the lights are bright, it is a little hard to see, so be visible, maybe even stand up if you have one. There's one way in the back there, I think. Ah, oh, that helped. Whoever just turned those house lights up. Was there a question back there? No. Ah, uh, okay. Can we get a mic? There we go. Uh, 
Uh, my name is Harris Breslow, and I'm a professor at the American University of Sharjah. I wanted to ask you a question about nonlinear program content, and in particular mobile. Where do you see the app uh, revolution uh, affecting television, or rather integrating with television in the next five to ten years? Thanks. Um, I think the app revolution is already starting to influence TV, and TV is already starting to influence um, the apps. Um, if you today, if you look at the big brand, big broadcast brands, um, you have the apps already. I mean, I'm Austrian, but most of the time I don't live in Austria, only over the weekend. So if I want to watch Austrian news, uh, I have an app about the uh, public broadcaster, and I go there, and at whatever time ever, I can watch the news I want to watch. Um, and that's influencing. If you go... And especially when you look at news, I think the genre which is mostly affected by the new technology uh, within TV is news. In the future, watching or let's say consuming news will be mostly digital. And that's the reason why um, CNN, for example, one focus of the whole strategy is besides breaking news is digital. You have to be successful in digital. You have to have the brand and you have to have the product that people can always go to your site, can always go to your app and get what they want and get what they need. And for that you need, exactly, you need the brand, you need the people people believe and trust, but you also need um, the digital product which you have to offer. Yeah, in fact, that, that kind of strikes a, a question we just got from the audience as well, is, is sort of where CNN fits into TBS, um, broadly strategically. I guess what you're saying is that in some ways, it, 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 one thing it does is provide you that entree into a digital platform. I think the tradition of, of TBS was always entertainment, news, and in the last 10 years also more and more sports, at least in the US. Uh, news, I mean, if you look, at global brands on TV, you don't see many. Uh, in our company, we have two. One is CNN, which is almost in all countries of the world, not only watched, but also known, and known for a certain attitude, which mm -hmm. is important. Mm -hmm. And the second is Cartoon Networks. Um, yeah, maybe you have MTV and you have the BBC, but not a lot of global brands um, uh, and we are very proud that we have two of them. And regarding CNN, for us the most important thing is the brand. The authenticity of the brand. Uh, CNN speaks out what really is. And CNN is fast. And that's what we want to be. And therefore the focus also on digital. Now help us fit that global, fit the Middle East regional picture into that bigger global, global world. <laughs> what you see, I mean, what you see, and I only can also, and also know that from our research, is that in the Middle East, the affluent people are much more ahead of the digital curve. So much more people um, use tablets, use smartphones. Um, contrary, for example, to Europe. Europe um, is much beyond, um, is much behind the digital curve. That's the one thing. Second, we are very proud that we started to invest um, in this region, region quite early. Um, 2002, it was CNN Arabic, the website, um, which is um, based in Dubai. Um, five years ago, we started CNN Studios um, uh, here in Abu Dhabi. We have Cartoon um, Networks Arabic uh, as a free-to-air offer, and I think we are now in the fourth year, and still, and already, uh, one of the top three free-to-air kids channels. We have the um, Cartoon Network Studios and the Academy here. So we are in West here, and we're also very proud when I um, uh, looked at the panel before, and we're very proud that we are part of this Mansoor project uh, together with Mubadala. Um, all of that because we know if we want to be successful in the future, we have to invest um, locally. And yes, it's the starting curve, uh, but it's the foundation of the success in the future. 
And did you see a path towards a, a way to monetize that uh, out in the region, given given the the, the small advertising market, the, the the small pay TV market, the very large free to TV market? There are markets where we have to earn a lot, and there are markets where we have to invest in the future. Not that we are losing money, I'm here, but we need to invest here now, especially on the kids sector, in order to be successful in the future. That's what, um, what it is. And the Middle East um, is, is a place where we have to do that. There was a question about distribution of TBS in the Emirati market, but you have, you have some stuff going here that, on Abu Dhabi TV, Mansoor. Yeah. Th those partnerships, how do they fit in? They're, they're, part, of, they're part of the tradition. We, we are proud that we have local partners. Uh, that's also necessary. If you go to certain regions, um, you don't believe, and I, I'm not talking about the news side, yeah? Um, uh, but if you go to the entertainment side, if you go to the kids side, we are proud to have partners in a lot of markets. Um, this also teaches us the cultural sensitivity, the, the cultural identity we need to focus on if we uh, want to have an att uh, attractive product. Other questions out in the audience? There's one here. Microphone heading your way. Uh, now you talk uh, uh, much about the CNN. Let's talk about the kings, the audience. Uh, first of all, I want to ask you as a professional about the quantity against quality. Mm -hmm. Okay? And I'm sure that you are aware about the number of channels in the Arab world. They are passing 1,000 now, as they said. Okay, and they said also the heavy viewing is only in maybe 10 or 12 of them. So what is your forecasting for this kind of situation in the next 10 years, as far as we are talking about 10 years? This is one thing. The other thing, we don't want anything to stop us from loving the CNN. Okay, and what we notice here, there, are, there is, you know, some criticism about, you know, reality or whatever, accuracy, about dealing with some issues and conflicts in some part of the world. I would not mention it directly. So please <laughs> give us some light about this. I start with the first question. It's easier to answer. <laughs> um, a lot of people believe, um, only because there are hundreds of channels um, which are almost not watched, they will go away. My bet is they won't. Maybe some of them, but there will others coming. I don't see um, the number of channels going down. But if you want to be successful, that was always my thought, you have to be a top three channel in your target group, in your genre. And we are very happy that on a global base, CNN is not only a top three channel, it's the number one channel if you put everything together. Uh, it's the number one channels in almost every single um, um, demographic. It's the number one channel if you look at linear. It's the number one channel if you look at digital. And why is this? Because I think the brand and the product we offer is the right one. Uh, a lot of people underestimate the impact of brands. Um, a lot of people are saying content is king. That's true, but it's only one of the kings. Brand is at least the same king. And you have to polish the brand. And you do that, um, that you program certain shows, certain programs, and you don't program other ones. You have to know what you want to offer to the consumer. Uh, and in CNN, we do that. That not everyone likes every single hour of news content on CNN all over the world. Actually, that we have to live with. And I say that with all respect 
of course we have to, um, and we hope we have the right cultural sensitivity um, all of the time, but sometimes um, we have to have the point of view our journalists have to have. And that's, that's our main, that's our, uh, our main, if you want, mantra. Uh, all of our journalists have one thing in common. They want to tell the truth. They want to paint a picture of the situation which is reality. And of course, sometimes we are all human. Sometimes there are mistakes in every part of the media world, also within Turner. But all in all, I really truly believe, if you look at CNN, um, it stands for what the brand st um, stands for. And it really uh, broadcasts uh, what we stand for. There I'm seeing you are not 100% satisfied with my, uh, my answer, but... <laughs> It was a good question. There, there was actually one that continued a little on that, on the vein of sort of local standards and local sensibilities, which is the rating systems for particularly PG-13 movies, which the the questioner felt came in a, a little too, too adult for a PG-13 audience here. Is there a way to deal with it? Is there a different rating system? Is, how does one look at those local standards versus global standards? One of the reasons why we have local um, people here on the ground is that we um, always look out for cultural sensitivities. Um, and um, yes, also here, sometimes uh, we see things or we don't see things which we should see, but most of the time I think we get it right. And I can say that at least for the overall majority of all the international media here. Questions out there? Uh, yeah, is there one over here? Yep. You've talked um, quite a bit about the relevance of non-linear non linear. Um, recently we've seen a lot of activity from telcos, AT&T acquiring DirecTV, BT moving into the broadcast space. Do you feel that um, the telcos have a place in the content, um, the content business or do they stick to just providing you with the tools to deliver your shows? Um. I think you have to ask that the telcos, because I can't tell them what they should do and what they shouldn't um, do. What we see, I mean, it's now the second wave. We already saw that in the 80s, especially in the US, where all of a sudden the telcos opened um, content operation and wanted to buy broadcasters. They gave that up and closed that business again. Now you see it again out of a completely different economic logic. Um, in a lot of markets, also in Europe, they say they need the triple play or even quadruple play uh, of uh, telephone, mobile phone, fixed line phone, um, fast internet and content. And um, I can't look into the future, but this is definitely a trend uh, which is a current trend now. Sadly, I'm looking at zeros down there. So we're end, at the end of our conversation, but uh, this has been extremely enlightening and, and helpful. Thanks very much, Gerhard. Thank you, Bill. Joining us here. Thank you.